I got gas. No, it's not what you think. I finally put some new fuel in Wilson, but there is an issue with my air filter that is a unique challenge that I have never encountered before. Welcome back to Wilson the VW Bus, the podcast about me and my adventures with my 1967 VW camper bus named Wilson. I'm your host, Joe, and in this episode, I am unfortunately not coming to you from inside the blue plaid Westy interior recording studio of my VW camper bus. I just could not get the time this week to record inside the bus. I was too busy driving it, or it was just too late. So I had to go to the office studio here at South Hill Customs and record and edit there. In the previous episode, I mentioned that my fuel was about six months old. And although the bus runs, I can just tell that Wilson isn't running great. So I started by changing the fuel filter that sits in line on the way from my fuel regulator and pump. Wait, I have, what's that? I have a fuel regulator? Well, yes, I do. And I always have. Since Dave installed the electric fuel pump, a regulator is necessary to make sure that the carb isn't overpressurized with fuel. There's also a small fuel filter on the carb, so I drained the fuel filter on the MP3080 gas carb. It wasn't bad, the, the little filter. There's just a little bit of super fine crud that was in there, um, but that's all it takes to make a carb run poorly. So I made sure to clean that out really well. It was next on my fuel cleanup extravaganza to clean and uh, redo the k air filter. Piece of cake, right? Well, no. I was able to undo the wing nut and remove the air cleaner top, but the air filter element itself was too tall to clear the top of the carb and the engine bay. Yeah, it's that close. Um, it just would not clear. It wouldn't come off. I'm pretty sure that Dave installed the carb and the air cleaner on the engine and then installed the complete engine assembly in the bus and my suspicion was just confirmed because there's no way I'm getting that air filter off. So do I drop the engine to remove the air filter? No way. I, I don't care how easy everyone says it is, I'm not going to drop the engine in my VW just to change the air cleaner. Instead, I decided to cut the air filter in half and then open it up uh, like a C and then remove it from the carb. It took about 30 seconds to cut and remove it, and then I used the K&N filter cleaner to clean the element. About 10 minutes after spraying on the cleaner, I hosed it off to reveal a brand new filter element. I shook it off and let it dry naturally for about an hour or so, making sure all the water was evaporated before applying a fresh coat of the red filter oil, uh, which I have in a spray aerosol can, and reinstalling the element back on the carb. The split isn't noticeable. Um, I aimed it towards the front of the bus, so you can't see it anyway. Now, I have been driving Wilson to work all week, so now that the old fuel was just about used up, I stopped by the local Sinclair gas station and filled up Wilson with their best 93 octane. After a few miles, it felt like Wilson was back to his good old running self again, with little hesitation and no stalling. The only issue that I had was that I overfilled the tank a bit, and some of the fuel spilled out uh, of the gas cap and onto the pavement. Although the fuel sending unit is new, the fuel gauge is off a bit, and when it's full, it only shows like 7 eighths of a tank. Not a big deal, I just have to keep it in mind. Now, I do have an update on that 59 panel bus that I saw for sale in uh, Carlisle when I was at the swap meet there recently. I posted my 59 panel bus pics on uh, a Facebook group called the Samba VW Show Buy Sell Trade Group. I don't really think it's tied to the actual Samba site, but regardless, uh, I did post the pictures there, and wow, did I ever get a response. One of which was from the seller who saw my post and sent me some additional YouTube videos, such as the very first full episode featuring an adventure from Gray's VW and a group called the Back Road Ramblers. Now, this motley crew live life to the fullest under an adventurous sky. 
And this is right from their uh, YouTube site. Um, they're always cruising around in their classics. Headed up by none other than Grayson McGill, a lover of God, surf, and all things old school, he keeps his crew moving to each adventure. They love to find buses in the woods and either find them and give them a good home or fix them up and keep them themselves. They try to stay on top of the history, too. The guys and one gal set off on an excursion halfway across the country to Wiley, Texas, with the dreams of purchasing and rebuilding a vintage bus right there on the spot. And that's what they did. They, uh, they drove out uh, to buy the bus from Dennis Collins and put the motor in there and then drove it home and they document the whole thing on their YouTube uh, video. The crew encounters unexpected trials and tribulations right from the get-go, but they manage to push through with a smile the entire way. Well, most of the way. Uh, I could probably make an entire podcast episode just from the few videos they have on their YouTube channel, but I haven't watched them all. Um, I did enjoy the ones I have watched, and I'm, I'm sort of saving them for a rainy day. The Metuchen, New Jersey Cruise Night kicked off this past Wednesday as they hold a classic car night on the second Wednesday of each month from May through September. And uh, this year it's you know on Main Street in downtown Metuchen from 6 to 8.30. The event supports uh, a group called Kicks Are For Kids, and it's a New Jersey nonprofit organization whose mission is to fund underprivileged or at-risk kids to take physical arts training with a positive role model, and uh, the ultimate goal is to provide these kids with the confidence and discipline to avoid negative influences such as drugs, crime, and unhealthy habits that may cause obesity and diabetes. Instead, the positive goals of a healthy life and a positive lifestyle are encouraged along with a I-can-do-it attitude. These kids will be empowered to develop leadership qualities in order to help themselves and others. Now, I had been to the downtown Metuchen cruise night uh, once before last year, and Wilson was well-received, so I figured I'd try it again. But by the time I got to Main Street Metuchen, every single parking space was already taken. Unfortunately, they do not close down Main Street for the event like they do in some other towns or make special parking accommodations. I mean, they do put bags over the parking meters stating that parking is for participants only, but it isn't enforced and there were more than a few regular cars parking in the show area that were taking up spots from the classic cars. I drove up and down Main Street four times and could not find a place to park, so I had to go off Main Street and park Wilson out of the event. Wah, wah. I can't say that I was not disappointed because I was really looking forward to this because I like to talk to everybody about the bus when they come up and ask questions. So maybe next month I'll try to leave early and try again. My son Zach did meet me there, however, and we got to spend some time and walk around together and talk to a few friends. I even had a guy approach me to show me a photo of his yellow VW thing. He asked if I was going to be at the Dubs and the Shrubs event later this month, and I told him that was the plan. I headed home early that evening, and although I didn't get to participate in the event on Main Street Metuchen, I did drive Wilson to work all week and around town and had a few people take pictures while I waited at traffic lights, etc. A few people also yelled out some nice comments, or beeped, or gave me a thumbs up as they passed me, which makes the experience of driving an old split-window VW bus all that more enjoyable. I'll catch you guys next time.